Hey, greetings and welcome to Cookie. And today we are going to be looking at working with JSON and array data in BigQuery. So what's really nice about BigQuery is that it works with universal data types like JSONs and arrays, something that we hear about a lot in the programming world. We can see that they have their representations in their own programs and we can see that we can get representations of these in BigQuery as well. Not too much overview. Definitely want to go ahead and be quick about this. Right. Let's go ahead and get started into BigQuery. What we want to go ahead and do is we want to see how we can create an array in BigQuery. We want to take a look. All right. And the syntax is really the same. Those that list in Python arrays and JavaScript. Okay. All right. We create an array and this is what it looks like. So this is very nice for us because we don't have a situation where we have to repeat, say, if these were if these were each separate rows, we don't have to repeat the data, or right? we can have the data inserted once. And then if they're associated with this array, we can associate it like this. All right. So we take another if you take another look, or right, if you want to go ahead and select array, show what I'm talking about. Right, you could see that the that the item that the items are associated like so, not like we have a situation. We have a situation where our data is repeated. Obviously, this is not optimal. This means more has to be stored in terms of storage. But you have repeated data that you might as well associate. So this is how usually things start out. Obviously, use the nest operator, but I'll show you how it's useful later. Okay. And now, say for example, we want to we want to work with a table. We want to get our JSON data, right? We have a endpoint, an API endpoint, and we want to make a table. We want to make a little struct, and let's just make a table for now. We could go ahead, head back over to our data set, create a table. All right? Go we'll get our GS URL, which is here, the shopping cart. So we're going to turn this JSON data into a table Right, and we're going to call it let's, the detail name is A. And JSON is very good when you have JSON. BigQuery is very good at detecting the schema as needed. Right, it could take a little preview, and we can see the JSON here. Right, we have we have two we have two so each object represents a row in the table. Right, so for the first row we have a string. The second, the second column, we're going to have an array. So this is representative of array. It's actually one entry, right? But it seems to look like it's four here, but it's actually representative of one entry, as well as the total cost, which is one entry, a string, and so on, right? So now we could see, now say, for example, we have a situation where that was that unless situation we saw earlier. Right, and we see we don't know what's going on with the data. Let me just go ahead and tell you on um, the, the issues might face. You might not know how many unique visitors are in this table. You might not know how many unique dates are in this table. But if we go ahead and use the array aggregate function, right, array ag underscore agg, right, you're going to have much more insights just by looking at the table that we create. We can see here, right, that we have two unique. We have this. We have the same visitor, right? If we if we actually copy and paste, it's actually the same visitor ID of that example. But we have two different dates. You can see that right here. So it's the same visitor looking at items at two different dates, and it just shows us what they saw, right? So now we have more insights. We have one visitor. We're not dealing with a bunch of visitors. Having one visitors looking at items 
of two dates, all right? And then say, for example, we want to see how many items a visitor saw on that day. We can use the array length function. I'll go ahead and use like so, array length. As you can see here, array length on an array. Array length clearly only works on arrays. You can see the products viewed on that day was two, and the products viewed on the next day was a bunch, a bunch more. So they're really shopping around. All right, and you want to go ahead and see how many unique items were viewed. Oh. <laughs> Right, because it's not. Go ahead and change that clearly. I'll change that in a bit. We want to go ahead and see how many unique items were viewed on a certain day. Right, we could see that it was only so, it was only so many items reviewed. And we want to take the length of that. Go ahead and get that a length of that to get more insights because counting is not fun when machines can do it for you. Right, you could see that 61 unique items. So 40 of these items were viewed more than once, right? So say for example that we have a data set that already has an array. Let's say, for example, for some reason, we just wanted to have these cells, these make-believe empty cells, right? They're really, they're really not empty entries, right? This is actually one entry representative. We could go ahead and use the unnest function, right, and replace the array with our variable like so, and you can see here that it actually maps out as needed. Oh, wait, I, I wrote food array. Wanna go ahead, unnest as F instead. And now you can see it maps it out as needed, right? So clearly some edits I have to make, I'll go make them later for the sake of this video. In time, let's move on to structs, right? So structs, so array is talking about heading down, but strikes are talking about heading across. And it's just a way to really more meaningfully associate your rows, All right? So go ahead and take a look at, um, we take a look at this table here. Hopefully it doesn't have too many columns. I'm gonna to have to go ahead and say star. All right, and then if you could take a look Right, we can see that if the totals dot visits, totals dot hits, totals dot page views, totals time on site, and so on, totals dot totals dot. This means all these row columns here are associated with the totals struct. Right, the total struct is a column, right, and it's of type record, and what we have here. And what we have here is this association. You'd see that without this struct, right, these items, these row, these columns here will be kind of all over the place. Will will won't be will be scattered throughout, right? We kind of take a look at that, right? Even though it's going to still associate everything, it's going to associate these structs together. But we can take a look at that with this query a bit, right? Where we're not too sure. We're not too sure what these rows, if these rows are associated or not, the structs, we can go ahead and clearly see that like so. We actually remove the asterisk, the dot asterisk. So we can go ahead and then we could see how they're associated as needed. Okay, let's go ahead, we could create a struct I want to go ahead, take a look at a struct, right? And then in here, we can see that there's arrays in here. Array and a struct that we created. And now we have our array. Now we have our row with our array in it. 
but also we can see that this is a struct as well. Right, so one key factor about this is that it's nice to have a struct with arrays in it, but it kind of doesn't make sense to have arrays with structs in it. As you, as you, um, I don't want to try to attempt to try to show you this, but it it's hard to it's hard to put this into two dimensions that we get offered in table with the tables that we have a SQL and BigQuery. So last challenge, I want to do a little challenge. I want you guys to try to challenge yourself by this by yourselves. Try to make this a little loud for yourself, right? We want to go ahead and upload this, upload this data, this JSON, and try to make a table and identify the struct here. I'm just going to go ahead and attempt to do that right now. I'm going to go ahead, go over to our data set. We're going to create a table, create a table from See if I'm able to just empty. Unfortunately, I have to upload a file. That's fine. I'll just go ahead and save the JSON. If I could just copy and paste it, that would be super nice. But clearly, we're not allowed to do that. ct.json, save, resume. GCP data certs, we're gonna name this table B because I can uh, detect the schema. Go ahead and create the table like so. Hmm. Let's see what happened here. And this is why I want it to be a little challenge. Right? A little challenge like you could try to do for yourself. Let's go ahead and try this again. I think what happened was it saw the array and it got mad that it was array, not just objects by itself. Let's try it again. Oh, wow. All right. Um, Okay, so yeah, unfortunately, I saw my error. My issue was that wasn't the JSON we're supposed to work with. That was actually um, the schema we're actually supposed to be using, right? So I'm gonna go ahead, go to Google Cloud Storage, right? And I kind of updated the readme so that we can go ahead, we can figure out what's going on, edit it as text. And what we wanna go ahead and do is take this JSON instead Copy and paste like so. Right, and I made the table B. Let's head over to the table, see what's going on in there. Right, and then we can see our record participants type record. Right, so we just know in how we know it's a struct. And then splits, no repeated. That's how we know it's array. Actually, very important, I just wanted to do, I'll highlight this. We see the type record, and I don't know why this should, they did this. They should have just done type struct, so now we can really know it's a struct, right? And then participants not split is of mode array, so we could know it's array. However, GCP likes to make things hard, right? GCP wants to make money off you. GCP wants you to give them a call and say, pay us and we'll help you. That's how GCP works. It's off money. We see that's why I have so much credit, all right? But money is not that significant. I think they just gave me some money back. That's interesting. But all right, still, let's still take a look at preview here. Right, we can see how this goes about, and we could and the shocks is really obvious just to pick up. All right, right? if you see the dot, it, if you just see that familiar JavaScript object syntax, right, you know it's a struct. It's, a, it's you know that the top that the name on the left end of that dot notation is going to be the name of the struct right so that's that's all that we're going to show you for today thanks for watching hope this video wasn't too long please like share and subscribe and in the comments any assistance you need definitely with the instructionals that i'm going to leave a link in the video description i always love to help out i always love to meet with my youtube watchers always reach out and i'll be glad to help out thanks for watching